Matea Olin. Welcome to Permastoke. How are you doing? I'm doing mighty fine. How are you? That is great to hear. I'm also doing well. <laughs> you are on Canada's Surf and Stand Up Paddleboarding podcast. Thanks for being here. Oh, you're welcome. You have been one of the most requested guests. How does that make you feel? Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, stoked to be here and yeah, can't wait to talk to you. Yeah. So for myself, you know, I lived in BC for 12 years. I just moved back to Ontario in July. So mm -hmm. I've been frequenting Tofino since about 2008 as much as I can, getting as much surf as I can. Um, so how does it feel as a Tofino resident and as a as popular surfer, how does it feel that you're out there just doing your own thing, doing what you love to do, but knowing that people are sort of watching you or following you, or is there some kind of pressure attached to that? Or how do you cope with that whole situation? I think like there's definitely like a little bit of pressure, but like, even for me growing up, like, I always had people I looked up to in and out of the water. And I think, like, getting the opportunity to be, like, role models for people and, like, have people watching you and be able to, like, take that and, like, take that pressure and turn it into something positive it has been huge for me. And just, like, for me, like, if I'm out of the water, I'm always just going to be do being myself and doing what I love and having fun. And, yeah. Excellent. So, you know, I've done some research on you and I know that you were born in Alberta, Canmore, Alberta, but you moved to Tofino when you were six months old. Is that right? Um, yeah, pretty much. I like I was born in Alberta, like you said, and then my family bought a house right by Cots Bay when I was about like half a year old. And we never lived full time in Tofino, though, until I was in like grade two. Oh, okay. I didn't know that part. Oh, so you were kind of back and forth between the two provinces. Yeah, we like, we would do like holidays and summers a lot of the time in Tofino, but kind of during the winter, we'd be in Canmore. Okay. Dark mountains. How do you feel about that Alberta river surfing scene? Have you ever tried that out? No, I haven't, but I did. I heard a lot about there's like that one river wave in Banff, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Kananaskis. Yeah, that sounds cold. Yeah, yeah, it, it does look pretty amazing. I could imagine you fitting in pretty well out there. So yeah. you're in Tofino, and now how did you get, you know, most kids are out on the monkey bars or at the, on the jungle gym. How did you get out in the waves? Oh, well, for me, like just growing up here in the summer with my family, we just would go down and hang out on the beach every day. So that kind of got me into it. And just I feel like in Tofino, like the ocean is such a big part of your everyday life. So I kind of just fell in love with it on my own and started like boogie boarding and surfing and every day. And then I just loved it so much and never wanted to stop doing it. But like, including like doing like surfing I also like competed in gymnastics and ballet and like snowboarded ever since I could walk oh wow so yeah. you are a very active person you must be doing something all the time do you get bored if you have nothing to do oh not really I feel like there's always something for me to do lately I never <laughs> but I don't know I love just being active and pushing my body and like growing up with my family, I have a very athletic family. So we always grow out and about doing like different sports outside. Okay. But what do you do if it's pouring rain or snowing as hard as can be? I mean, do you read a book or watch a show or do you get up to other things? Um, I definitely love like having those days where you can sit down and read a book or like play board games with your family. Like those days, like I love them so much and you do get to have that break from constantly like doing something active or like doing school or like other things you have to get done every day. So I definitely like take the time to do that some days. Excellent. So who was it that introduced you to surfing then? Uh, mainly my mom. She moved to Tofino because she loved like the ocean and I don't know, just everything Tofino had to offer. And then 
when we moved here as a family. It was just naturally, and she like, I don't know, took me in the ocean when I was really, really young, but then I started to fall in love with it on my own. And so when did that hobby start to turn into a potential career path or, you know, the, the competitive side of things? Like, how did that unravel for you? Kind of like the first comp I ever did, I think I was probably 10. But then, so I did like local comps when I was around 10 for the first time. But then my first national comp was when I was around 12. And I just like doing that international comp and like surfing against girls my age all around the world that were absolutely ripping, kind of like lit the fire in me to compete and like come home and start working harder. And like that inspired me to like improve a lot so I could get better and I could do well in events like that. And then kind of I just started doing more and more comps and like it became something that I could like do all year round and travel to compete and compete for Team Canada and it just like motivated me and I fell in love with the whole like part of competing and like getting to work on your mindset and like working on competing and like just that constant learning. So just, walk yeah. me through this a bit because I'm fascinated by the competitive side. So tell me what was that first competition you competed in internationally? Um, it was... I'm not sure what year it was, but it was an ISA World Juniors in Oceanside. Oh, okay. And yeah. so did you do pretty good there? Um, I think I made top 10. Like, I think I made quarterfinals, so I made top 10, which wow. is, like, pretty good. But just the, like, girls that were in that event who, like, won and, like, made the final, their surfing was, like, my, like, for me, like, pretty mind-blowing. And I definitely, like, started to set my bar higher and higher going to events like that. How are you perceived on the world stage as a Canadian surfer? I'm not that sure, but like a lot of people, they're like, oh my God, you're surfing for Team Canada. That's incredible. But they all assume I live probably in Hawaii or like mm -hmm. California somewhere. But when they actually find out like our whole or a majority of surf team was like born and raised in Canada, they're all pretty, yeah, surprised. Yeah, I bet some of the people you've met um, – may have never even worn a wetsuit before or it's certainly not a, a part of their daily surfing anyhow yeah definitely but I don't know I think now like a lot of the people going to comps like that like they're traveling year round to like pretty cold places to oh, compete okay. they love do you think that coming from Tofino and that very raw environment and the rain and the nature do you think that that kind of makes you a bit like adds this sort of toughness to you um I think a little bit yeah and I think like being in Tofino like growing up you really just surf because you loved it and you would have to like put on a wet wet seat and go surf in the pouring rain but you did it because you loved it so much and I think that's like I don't know I'm so grateful for where I live and like go and getting to surf like uncrowded waves and really do it like for the love of it so after that first international competition so then take us through the the journey from there because i believe the next sort of really big uh was the next really big thing the pan am or was there some competitions before that there were definitely like a few different months before that like doing like the isa world juniors again over the years and doing different 2s events where like I got some pretty good results there and started to like compete like better and meet like more people and do more like higher rank comps. But then for me in like my career, definitely the Pan Am was probably one of the bigger highlights. Okay. So how did that, how does one get into the Pan Am games? What did you have to do to, to qualify for that? Um, well, I qualified for our national team. So then we like went down a few years because we had like a Pan Am trials and then like a another Pan Am trials where you qualify for the real Pan Am. And I ended up like the first year we went down there for Team Canada. I won gold and longboard and bronze and shortboard. And then we went back and that's when I qualified for the Pan Am games. And that happened like a year and a bit ago. Okay. And then we only a few of us qualified for like the real Pan Am games and then we all went down as a team and that's where you got to go and stay and 
the like or like the Pan Am Village they created and get to like spend the few weeks down there with all the other sports competing at the Pan Am Games and I won bronze there and that was definitely like one of the biggest comps I've ever done well in. Okay great and you know I understand that you living in Tofino you're living and surfing amongst some some titans out there like you got Raph, you got Pete, you got Noah, you got Catherine and Seth, you got all kinds of people. Um, yeah. You know, how does it feel having those guys as sort of probably mentors, but also as your surfing peers? I think like I, I love it. Like those, like that crew of surfers in Defino, like they've inspired me ever since. I like started surfing and getting to like go on surf trips with Pete and like Noah and that whole crew of people is absolutely insane and getting to like watch them out in the breaks around here and learn from them has made me the surfer I am today for sure and they're such like incredible people in and out of the water who have like so much knowledge and know so much about our coastline. Yeah now you know for me I've been surfing for you know, around 20 years, but something like doing an air or, you know, some of the barrels, like these are things that not everybody does. So how does that come about? Does someone teach you how to do an air or one day do you just start flying? Like, how do you get to those next levels in the sort of surfing echelon? For me, it's really just watching, like, everybody around here and watching, like, the girls around the world and watching video clips and getting inspired and then wanting to, like, personally take my surfing to that level. Okay. But so, then a lot of the time, like, even, like, going for airs, like, I still, like, don't really know how to do any great airs, but just, like, trying, like, even if you fully, like, mess it up, just trying it and having fun with it and learning. Yeah. Excellent. You've grown up in a really interesting time. You've grown up with the internet and YouTube has probably been around for the majority of your life. So, wow, what a great learning tool. Like, if you can believe it or not, there was a time when there was no such thing as YouTube and we couldn't yeah. watch videos to learn how to do things. That is that is such a gift that that's available to you, yeah. So, yeah. so you have such a great crew of people in Tofino. Now, when you go to some of these world events and, and you're around people, do you ever get sort of like starstruck around some of your idols or just think like, oh my God, how did I, how did I get here? Definitely. Like you go, like the more cons I go to, I'm getting to like surf against and compete against like my heroes and even just being in the same event and like watching them like out in the water and like just their whole mindset in and out of the water and who they are in and out of the water. Like sometimes it does like fully take or like it's mind blowing to me that I even have like get the opportunity to be there. But I don't know. It kind of like when you're around those people more and more, you kind of just like, I don't know, strive to be like them. And that's why like, I'm so lucky to have so many people I look up to. Amazing. Super cool. So, you know, we'll, we'll explore the competitive side things for a little bit then. So the Pan, Am, the Pan Am Games happened. And now take me through the journey to the Olympics. So we, like, we have a great team right now for Team Canada. And we actually, we haven't had our qualifier for the Olympics yet. And they were meant to run last spring, but they got postponed till this coming May. But practically there's um, seven spots left for the world. And so if you make top seven of the people who haven't qualified yet, you'll be going to the Olympics. So we have a great team of very talented surfers. And uh, like I've been working towards this now for a long time and I'm feeling like really confident in the like training I've put in lately at home. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to like going down to El Salvador with our team and yeah, getting the opportunity to fight for the last few spots. Okay, so you still will have to do that next year. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned the training. So what does your training look like? For me, like, 
a lot of it has to do mentally, but I do work with a really great strength coach on, he's the Red Bull trainer. So I'm very lucky to have him in my corner and we have a really great program together. Okay. And then doing like in water training, working on my competing and my surfing and doing like taking the time every day to do yoga and roll out and just really kind of like work on my body and make it feel confident and ready for competing and surfing bigger waves is huge for me. Okay. So are you doing like the Rocky Balboa? Like, are you running down the beach in your jogging pants and toque every morning or what? Oh, not really like that. But like, I, <laughs> and I love like taking the time to make my body feel good because it definitely gets tired and tight when you surf every day. Okay. Excellent. So this is a really interesting time to be alive. You, you know, you're surfing, you're training for surfing but we also have this whole COVID-19 thing. Um, so are you attending, are you still in high school? Um, yeah, I'm taking a, like I'm in grade 12 right now. Okay, so are you attending actual school or are you doing that at home or? Um, I've been doing all online school for like the past three years. So oh. it hasn't affected me a ton. So I take it then that that online school, that was part of your, because of your surfing lifestyle, that was to accommodate the training as well as your school? Yeah, I like, yeah. We kind of like grew up doing, like I went to a Waldorf school for a little bit. And then when we moved to Defino, we kind of started homeschooling then. Oh. And I think, so we've been like homeschooling a lot of my life and just doing like online and being able to do, like your school wherever you go has been huge for me and like getting like I think now like I'm so lucky with all the incredible online courses you can take for high school and yeah so okay. I've been doing online school for a while now yeah so you're pretty used to this this is no big deal for you you're you're you're, you're used to the online thing you're a trooper that way yeah I don't know it's still though like it's weird not traveling and being home for so long but yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Are you going getting a little stir crazy at times without the touring around to surf? Um, yes and no. Like I've been enjoying my time at home so much lately, but I'm definitely like getting ready to go travel and be in the warm water again. Do you have a favorite destination other than Tofino? Um, for me, like I love Hawaii and Australia. And and what is it that you like so much about those places? I just love the whole environment they've created and like the ways and the community and just also like being surrounded by the best surfers around the world in those places I love and getting to be in warmer water and the whole like Aloha spirit why I love so much. Yeah yeah I was gonna say I've never been to Australia but being in Hawaii and that feeling of the heritage there you know seeing the Duke statue on the week on the beach and just knowing all the legendary surfers that have been on the North shore, it just feels so magical. Like when you go there and it's so accessible to us, like, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I've grown up watching surfing movies, documentaries, and then you go to pipeline for the first time. And it's like, there's no fence. There's no bodyguards. It's like, this is actually available to anybody. It's yeah for really, sure don't you think that i feel like we have this sort of secret that not everybody knows about like just how special riding waves feels oh it's literally one of like the best feelings in the world and like i don't know you get to learn so much through it and meet so many amazing people through it and you get to travel like it's one of like the best things in the world i think yeah, I feel like if everybody surfed, there wouldn't be any world problems. If we were just going for that, catching that wave, that that innocent spirit of just riding a wave and just living purely in the moment, it's just such a such a great thing. Oh, for sure. I feel I think I read somewhere that you work at a ice cream shop. Do you work at Chocolate Tofino? Um, uh, when I was younger, I did for a few years. Yeah. 
Okay, so you used to work at the ice cream shop because I was wondering how that fit into your training now. Is ice cream like uh, not allowed or you have cheat days? No, I'm definitely allowed ice cream. I mean, you got to keep yourself happy too. Okay, right on, right on. There's no rule for, you know, future Olympians that uh, ice cream is not allowed? I hope not. <laughs> Okay. Ice cream now in Tofino. It's hard to resist it. Yeah, yeah. And now talking about the spirit of Hawaii, the Aloha spirit we just talked about. I also watched the video of you traveling up to Haida Gwaii. Um, yeah. With his name was Gualiga. So well, he was, um, yeah, our local guide there, and he's such a legend. He's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about that experience being out in that sort of very raw nature sort of untapped um surf that was like one of probably the best surf trips that i've had in my life like i got to go there with the whole crew of incredible people and bring one of my best friends friends page um arms along yeah. and we went there and we just went to go surf good waves and learn about like the culture in Haida Gwaii and like we were in the middle of nowhere, it kind of felt like with a crew of incredible people and we got to go surf waves that we've never surfed before and we got to get them like all time. And just like, I don't know, going on trips where you're surrounded by just some of your best friends and you look around and it's just perfect waves coming in and you're the only ones out. Like those mm. are the moments of like, when you're a surfer, like those are the moments you live for. Yeah, so I know Haida Gwaii does have a surf shop um, but what does the scene look like there? What Was there other people out there at any other times you were there? Um, there were at like a few of the breaks closer to the community, but I don't think a lot of like, like not that many people surf there year round. And there's only like, it doesn't, not all the ways right there too, too often, but Gualiga Hart, like he was one of like, the most frothing and insane surfers coming from Haida Gwaii, I think. And I think he's trying to get surfing bigger and bigger there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Olin, that last name, it kind of reminds me of Odin. Is that like, do you have a Norse heritage? I do. I am um, like my grandparents live, all well, my dad's side of family, they all live in Germany. And then on my mom's side, they're all Ukrainian. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And are any of them sort of water people as well, or was that just your mom? Mainly just my mom. And then how did your sister come into this whole situation? Because she's really, also really coming into her own. Oh, definitely. Um, like, watching her improve these last few years has been insane. And we kind of just, like, grew up together. And, like, when it would go biking down to North or walk down to Cuts Bay and go surf together. And... I don't know. I kind of think like she watched me go and do what I love and then she just wanted to be like me. So we got to push each other and yeah, do the whole be on the whole journey together, which has been incredible. So how do you feel when you see all those uh, soft tops out there and all these, you know, aspiring surfers? How does that make you feel? I like, I love it. Like just, I love like seeing people out in the ocean, having fun and smiling. Like for me, that's what it's all about. Yeah, so you're a you're a stoke spreader. Oh, for sure. I think like I think in surfing like there can be like challenging times and like when you're out in the water like you do need to know how to like respect everybody and like take turns in the lineup and then that way everybody can all share the stoke. But at the end of the day, like it's the ocean, you never know what could happen and you're just out there trying to get like the wave of your life and like keep searching for that feeling of riding a wave. And I don't know. I think sharing it with people is the best thing. Yeah. The ocean is who's in charge. Not the, yeah. 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 So I'm curious, do you have a favorite surfing movie? Um, I do. It's leave a message and it's an all female surf movie and all like the females in it completely rip and yeah. Leave a message? Yeah. Okay. I have not seen this one. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. 
No, it has like all my like favorite female surfers in it and they were rich. Oh, okay, right on, right on. So, you know, you've traveled, you know, around the world. You've been to some great places. The future's looking bright. We talked about the Alberta River scene. What about the Great Lakes? Is that on your radar? Um, definitely. I was actually there not too long ago. We were premiering Northern Tides at, I think it was the Surf the Great Surf Shop. Mm, yep. And we actually, like, I'm not sure what event they were doing, but we were taking a bunch of a group of, like, females to the Great Lakes and teaching them how to surf. And we, like, actually had no waves whatsoever. Like, it was, like, a lake, but... Yeah. Well, it is a lake, but it was flat like a lake. And we just, like, took them out on soft tops and paddled around and taught them how to surf if there were actually waves. But, like, going there and being with that whole surf community was incredible and, like, I didn't quite realize how many people were that into surfing there and how much of a surf community there was and kind of like looking into it and talking to people like you guys get pretty good waves over there. Yeah. So I would be keen to go back one. Yeah, especially in Toronto. It's they have quite an awesome community there. And yeah. Out here where I live on Lake Huron, um, I take people out surfing every weekend, even if it's just flat water. <laughs> And it blows my mind how stoked people become from, you know, a flat water lesson. As long as they get a push from me and, you know, they can kind of stand up or get to their knees. Like it just, it, it really touches my heart to see how powerful that experience is for people, even when it's not like a huge barreling wave. Oh, for sure. You're like, no matter like what you do, if you're in the water, everybody's sharing the same emotions yeah yeah absolutely so i think you get asked this all the time but i think it's a good question and mm -hmm. you know because i remember you're 17 or 18 at the moment i'm 17 at the moment 17. when i think back to being a teenager i think 17 was like my favorite age that is such a fun exciting time oh it is i like yeah life's been great lately yeah, but I was an extremely huge goofball, you know, going around town, making videotapes and doing silly things. And so to see the mantle that you're carrying already, um, it just, it blows my mind to think of that sort of um, responsibility that you have, you know, you're, you're in magazines, you're on internet videos, you know, people are looking at you and watching you whether you know it or not you're kind of being a role model for some people and probably especially young girls so how does that make you feel and how do you handle that responsibility I think like for me I like don't really think about it too much like I'm still just out there doing what I love and like I'm not like I'm like literally only doing it because I love it so much and I love like taking time every day to like take my surfing to new levels and like take my computing to new levels and work on my mindset and my body and like getting to do that and like be able to make money and travel the world is like my dream and like getting to inspire people and inspire people to like be who they are and be happy and do what they love every day and I think getting the opportunity opportunity to inspire others has always been my goal and I'm so grateful for the life I live every day. Wow, super cool. So you like totally skipped over, you know, doing the paper route and all those normal things and you just went straight to pro surfer. Yeah, I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. I st I'm still really young. You never know what can happen. Yeah, no, that is awesome. So, so what do you think the future is? What are your goals for surfing? Um, for me, mainly, like, I want to compete in a few Olympics for Team Canada. Um, I would love to be the first Canadian on the world tour. But I mainly just want to inspire, like, the next generation of girls surfing in Tofino and in Canada to start, like, taking their surfing more internationally. And I also like looking up to Pete and Noah and the life they've, like, lived surfing waves around Tofino and, like, going and competing and 
just getting the opportunity to be a Canadian surfer and go and find new waves around home has inspired me huge. So I would love to definitely do a little bit of that throughout my surfing career too. Amazing. So aside from surfing career, do you also, are you also pursuing some kind of post-secondary that you're interested in as well, or are you focused more on surfing right now? I'm definitely focused on surfing, but I think after high school, I love like the body so much. So I definitely think I'll take a few courses on like the body, whether it's being like, a, I don't know. We'll see like a trainer or I don't know. We'll see. I can see that. I'm definitely going to like, I would love to learn more about the body, whether it's like physio or yeah. Okay. So if you weren't surfing, you think you'd be somehow involved in fitness or coaching or, or something like that then? For sure. I like, for me, like, even though I am an athlete and a surfer, I love spending like every day or part of every day in the gym, like working on my body. And I think there's so much to learn about your body. And I love like taking that time to make your body feel incredible. And yeah, I think that's a huge, like something that inspires me every day. And so I'd love to learn more about it. Wow. You're blowing my mind here. That is a great awareness to have, man. All right. So when you're not surfing, what other kind of things keep you stoked? Um, I don't know. Definitely like just hanging out with my family and going on different adventures, like going hiking or going out on the boat and just really like going and learning new things and trying new things with my loved ones. And just like, I don't know. I like for me, if I'm not surfing, like just going on adventures and like trying new things definitely gets me stoked. Right on. I would say that you're a perfect guest for Perma Stoked. I think you nailed that. Yeah. And so when you were a kid, did you compete in the uh, Brewweiler Kids Classic? Was that ever something you did? Oh, for sure. I, I think I did that a few years. Yeah, Cal did put on a great event every year for that. And it was so fun to see all the kids come together and compete. Yeah, absolutely. Is that something now that you help out with too? Um, I haven't been into Fino you know, for the last few, but oh. definitely like from what I've seen, it's crazy like how many up and coming kids there are in Tofino and how many of them like love surfing and love competing and yeah. You know, in 30 years or something, like it's going to be incredible to look back at the surfing lineage that it's created. I was really disappointed when SBC Surf went away. So I know. that was like, I love that magazine and like even like I think probably two came out a year but you did get to see like all the insane photos from around here and all the surfers and it was just a really great magazine to look at. Yeah it was such a blow eh? I know. Yeah so, it does, though, like it takes a lot of work to have a magazine like that though and yeah. Yeah. But hopefully it'll sure. come one day I feel like. Yeah maybe so this podcast I thought I'd like to fill that gap and kind of keep it going, you know, keep something going that people can get to know the Canadian surfer still, because I've been missing it so much. I thought I'm just going to start a podcast and start having these conversations myself. Like what oh, yeah. way to, to meet everybody, you know? Oh, for sure. That's rad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before I let you go, um, I like to ask people, is there anything really awesome that you're either watching, reading, or listening to? Right now? Yeah. Or recently. Um, I read a pretty good book not too long ago that I loved. Okay. What was that called? Um, it's called Mindset. Mindset? Okay. <laughs> I just yeah I finished it not too long ago I like it's pretty good enough now but definitely my favorite book I've read oh, in a long this time. looks serious the new psychology of success how yeah. we can learn to fulfill our potential parenting business school relationships <laughs> wow yeah wow. so I read the book and loved it I actually Pete DeVries was reading it on a plane when we were going on a trip a long time ago so then I wanted I got my hands on it too and read it and loved it 
Okay, so what's your takeaway from that book? Um, they talked a lot about having a growth mindset and that kind of like, I'm starting to take that into my everyday life. And I think, yeah, you can have a growth mindset in so many things. And I think that's pretty in life. A growth mindset? Yeah. So what do you mean by that? Just kind of like changing your outlook on life a lot. And I think in like this book, they did like a ton of studies on it and how like much your like mindset and how you're looking into life and like doing it for the love of it can kind of affect like your whole life and how far you go and something you love. Mm, wow. That's pretty powerful stuff. I can see why you would um, enjoy that book. I also kind of, I feel like you sort of had some of that already ingrained in you naturally though. You sort of, it sounds like that's what you've done with your life. You, you haven't been surfing because it's going to gain you popularity or get you somewhere. It sounds like the surfing came first and all the accolades sort of came second. For sure. And I think like, no matter what you do, it should always be that way. Cause Oh wait. Yeah. Um, Cause I think like for everybody, the ultimate goal is to be happy. So as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, and just being happy, enjoying your life, I think, yeah, that should always be the main reason. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm really getting the feeling from you that you're just being yourself. You're just doing you. You're not trying to impress anybody. You're not trying to be the cool kid in school. And things are just sort of coming to you because you're keeping that positive, you're, you're keeping that positive field open. Yeah, for sure. And definitely, like, I can be sometimes, like, hard on myself because I do, like, set goals and I do, like, want to go and accomplish my goals and be, like, the best person I can be. So I think that, yeah. But otherwise than that, I'm just doing it because I love it and I love getting the opportunity to, like, be a surfer and work on becoming a better person every day. So how do you turn off that negative self-talk when it starts up? I think, I don't know. But when you're out in the surf, is it always pure bliss <laughs> or do you ever get like, oh man, I wish I was performing a bit better? Um, I get like that all the time. Like I, I definitely am a person that like wants to be kind of perfect at everything, but that's something I've had to overcome because surfing is nothing close to perfect. But yeah, I don't know, just like, feeling those emotions like that has helped me get to where I am today and yeah. I think like even if you're not happy or you're like not feeling positive on something like really like learning from that and like figuring out what you need to do to become or like get to that level you want to get at yeah for sure it's hey. all like you have to have like the lows to have like the highs and achieve your goals and like being able to take that time and experience being tired or like surfing the worst you've ever had that makes you enjoy the highs like that much more I think good advice absolutely yeah so what are some of the waves that are on your itinerary like is there a wave out there in the world that you just have to surf that you haven't surfed yet um definitely JB. I think that's like that wave, I think, is on my bucket list for sure. And I haven't even been to South Africa yet. So, yeah, hopefully I can make that happen soon. Okay, right on. You know, you were talking about female surf movies. I think that you should be, you should make, like, Endless Summer Part 3. That would be fun. <laughs> All girls chasing the waves around the world. That would be kind of a cool, a cool thing to see. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. So, Matea, are you in Tofino right now, or are you in Vancouver? I'm in Tofino. You're in Tofino. Okay. Because I thought I read or something that you were doing some training in Vancouver as well. I do. I am. Um, the trainer that I work with through Red Bull, he works at Fortius, but I think actually they might be closing now, but that whole facility they have was absolutely insane and it was like I think as an athlete like that facility and like being able to go someplace and train for a few days like okay. yeah was but how many days 
I mean, you're probably like a fish or something. Like you probably can't go too many days without being in the ocean. I can, but like if you take like even if you go to like the mountains or go to somewhere like inland, like taking a few weeks off, it makes you fall in love with it more, and you're just that much more stoked to get back in the water after. Okay, yeah, that's a good attitude to have. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if you do take a break, sometimes they'll come back and you pop up and you fall, but then you laugh and, I don't know, you find your rhythm. Yeah, and you probably have some pretty awesome muscle memory, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, awesome stuff. Matea, it has been so great talking to you. I thank you for coming on the Permastoke podcast and sharing a bit of your story. And I wish you only all the best on the road ahead. And honestly, I'm super stoked to watch your journey unravel for you. Oh, thanks, Derek. And thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So when I come out to Tofino sometime, you think you can maybe show me a couple, uh, a couple tricks I don't know? For sure. Or we'll just go out in the water and get super stoked. Right on. Awesome. I'm down with that as well. Okay, Matea, all the best to you. We will see you back on here some other time. But for now, stay stoked. Thank you. You too.
Hi, I'm Mateo Olin, and you are listening to Perma Stoked. Choo! <laughs> <laughs>